the queen of hard truths, the Iyanla Van Zant is here. Later in the show, he is part of R&B royalty, especially for his generation. He calls himself the king of unbothered, Grammy-nominated recording artist, author, Omarion, with a special performance. It's a great hour. It's all about how you build it. And they are both here to share their keys to success, how they conquered things that were unimaginable. We're starting, though, with the queen, Iyanla. She's known for, of course, fixing a life or two and has even been dubbed a meme machine for some of her most memorable moments on her award-winning show. Take a look. Lock me in my face and gouge my eye out with a plastic spoon. <laughs> Not on my watch. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Here's what I want you to get, beloved. Take her down. <laughs> that is delicious. Wow. Now, Iyanla is back with season two of her Shondaland audio relationship podcast. It's called The R Spot, and she's even more unfiltered and honest than ever before. Iyanla um, is one of those people, you know, you wonder how folks are behind the scenes. She's truly a special human being, and she's here to open up about relationships and how to deal with loss. Um, you can hear I'm slowing down because she shared with the world an unimaginable loss of her own. And Tam Fam, she agreed to come on our show to talk about so many things because she does not lean out of life. And that's why we love her. Please give it up for the queen of hard truths, our friend, Iyanla Van Sant. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, so I see you, I just want to weep. I'm just so happy for you, so proud of you, so excited. I watch you, and you look good. How's the baby? Do look it. at how she's weeping. <laughs> now, I'm about to start crying. The baby is waiting for you to come fix his life. <laughs> Because at four, he is in need of oh, a repair. Yeah, he needs repair. He needs a repair oh, yeah, yeah, job, yeah, yeah. maintenance job. I know. I mean, you know, looking at... First of all, every time you go on social media, there's a you have a meme for every <laughs> feeling in the world. I know, right? <laughs> and I never know what we're, we're going to get from you, right? So you walk out the door now, this smile, this beautiful outfit, this youth. I mean... You never disappoint, but I know that when you agreed to come on the show, part of the conversation would include a hard truth. Yeah. That we lose people we love. Yeah. That they transition. Yeah. And you talked about on your social and shared with the world in July that you lost Nisa, your daughter. Your My baby, baby girl. Your baby. Yeah. 48 years old. Yeah. When you walk out the door just now to sit down, we're talking about the podcast, but you know we're talking about her. Do you consult with the universe? How do you shore yourself up? Well, you know, after 46 years of doing this work, uh, game on. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> game on. Yeah. You know, you, you gotta, you, people want to read books and they yeah. want to meditate and rub crystals on their eyelashes and all of that. <laughs> but then when, when the problem hits, yeah. that's when it's game on. But why am I over here crying? Because we love each other. Right. We love yeah. each other. We've loved each other for a long time. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing that women, women of color can love each other, yeah. support each other. Yeah. And, and we don't have to be in each other's face. Yeah. But there's never been a time that I text you that you didn't respond, never been a time that you yeah. text me I didn't respond. And that's what relationships are about. It's not about being in your face. And that's why I do the R spot, yeah. to give people the skills and the tools that they need right. to have this kind of connection, this kind. There's no place that you can go and call me and I don't show up. Right. Or you need something and right. I, you know, my, my friend, Michelle Lopez, my stylist, has a project going on called Refer Her, oh. where you refer 
another sister woman. You refer somebody, their business, their health, where, where we just uh, love. So I pray for you all the time. Oh. And so that keeps our connection. Yeah. I pray for you. I pray for Jennifer. I don't have to compete with yeah. you. I want you to grow because I'm not my sister's keeper. I am my sister. Yes. So yes. your rise is my yeah. rise. Oh. Yeah. On, um, you talked about the podcast in August. You talked about your relationship with Nisa. Yeah, yeah. And how you were able to reconcile before she passed away. What is it like, you know, when the, you're the teacher? Yeah. Right? And now the teacher becomes a student of life. Yeah. The student of grief. Well, you know, the deceptive intelligence of the ego always wants you to think that you're not enough, not good enough, not worthy. And for me, who spends all of my life teaching other people, helping other people, fixing other right. people, you know, when something happens in my life, the first thing the ego says to me is you're a fake, you're a fraud. You can save other people, but you can't save your child. And so, but, but you know, God yeah. in her infinite wisdom is so yeah. wonderful. When I lost Nisa, I knew how to do it because I had already buried Jamia. See, when I buried Jamia, I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to be a woman burying a child. Mm -hmm. But so when I lost Nisa, uh, it's been 115 days. When I lost Nisa, I knew how to do it. That's grace. Yes. I knew how much to do. I knew who to call. I knew not to try to do everything by myself. And, you know, I think one of the most sacred relationships on the planet is the relationship between the mother and the daughter. Yeah. I mean, mother and son, that's a whole nother <laughs> outer worldly thing. But sacredness, because all children bring to life the subconscious issues of the parent. That child lives in your body. That child knows you from the inside out. That child has heard your voice, your secret thoughts. But when you give birth to a daughter, she's bringing to life those things that you hold inside that you may not even know that are there. And she's going to show them to you in how she shows up in the world. Wow. So Nisa showed me who I was in many ways that I didn't... Didn't even... <laughs> I want to tell you, you talked about this in 2009 um, when you were talking about the loss of Jamima. You said, I survived that, survived my daughter's death, which, you know, I think about every day that I open my eyes as a mother. It is unspeakable to have to bury your child and I survived that. Yeah. I survived that, and I'll survive this. You know, there's a, a, a saying in the Caribbean, the bigger the monkey, the bigger the stick they beat him with. Yeah, yeah? uno, you know? <laughs> so I have a big life. Yeah. I have a big place in the world. I have a big assignment. So... What is the assignment? to facilitate the evolution of human consciousness, one mind, one heart, one life, one spirit at a time. That is my assignment. You know, and I do it big in the world, but really, my heart is with one person at a time. Yes. One. One yes. mind, one heart, one life. Because, you know, scriptures say they leave the 99 to save the one. So I'm going for the one. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one. So I have a big assignment in the world, and so darkness wants to take me down. The darkness don't need the crackhead. The cr got the crackhead. It needs the one that's bringing the light. So if I'm bringing the light, you know they call me the guru yeah, from the hood. Of course. Right? right here in Brooklyn, okay? <laughs> so it, everything is going to challenge me. My relationships, my money, everything. Because when you're doing a big work, and I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about you. Look well, at the I'm here because okay, of you. Okay, okay. <laughs> in your life, yeah. when you have something to do, yeah. that's when the darkness is coming wow. for you. 